All right, we have a new segment, episode type, whatever you might want to call it. This is a Q&A session from the comments section of my videos. So there's a lot of questions being asked about various projects or the videos that I'm putting out. I'll answer them all here in this video. So sit back, enjoy, and you may learn something here. So if you do have a question, please feel free to drop a comment down below. Let's get into it. So first off, Merhan has launched USDM. This is their dashboard at the moment. You don't see much information here and we will see that come up very soon. So I believe people have been moving over some USD over to their banking service and then from there it will appear in their accounts and then they'll be able to start minting and then we'll see more data on chain. I'll probably check in on this in about a week's time. I'll cover it in a news update coming up, but in a week's time we'll have a look and see exactly how much liquidity has been moved in. And then we'll have a look at all these various partners that have teamed up with Mahen and see where liquidity is going after that. So it's it's going to take a little bit of time. This this uh, process is a slow burn. So this is just the first step. We'll see what happens next. The other thing that has happened is that ETP, the exchange traded product that has come in by Liquid, this Cardano ADA staking by Liquid. And we've had one day of trading from that Thursday to the Friday. So it has dropped a little bit, but it's still way too early to really have a look at this and see where it's going to go. If it's tracking the Cardano price or if it's going to move off and trade in a different direction. But what I'd love to see is the amount of volume that goes through this as well uh, and see how many institutions investors come into the ecosystem. So we'll have a look at this over the next few months to see how it goes and see what uh, type of users, how many users, uh, institutional users move through this and how much volume is created. So uh, I'll keep an eye on this one here um, and we'll keep you all up to date about the ETP. All right, so let's jump into the comments here. So the first one here, a lot of these questions are around USDM, but we do have a trickle of other ones as well. So first one here, can retail folks convert ADA of the USDM. And that's a no. So this is supposed to be fiat to USDM. So USD uh, or uh, I believe also some other like Euro and Sterling from what I've heard in uh, X space. But that's what people are going to be converting over to USDM. But it's purely just fiat assets over to USDM at the moment. And will retail folks be able to use this? Uh, not quite yet. It's open only to institutional investors up to at least the end of March, where then it'll be open up to retail. It might change, dates might vary. So keep an eye out on their Twitter feed, their X feed, whatever it's called these days, and you'll be kept up to date when retail will be able to jump on board. Someone please help me understand how the launch of the stablecoin USDM helps Cardano ecosystem and its workings. There's a few things here. So first off, a lot of people that are trading in the ecosystem are trading a Cardano native token, such as MIN with ADA. So that's trading two unstable assets. So how do you protect your profits when ADA is also dropping at the same time and uh, MIN is dropping as well? So uh, you're in a lose-lose situation. You're not exiting that and uh, going to a stable asset where you eventually exit and be able to pay for your bills, such as USD. And that's the type of trading experience that you want. You want to be able to protect your profits. Now we do have JED, we do have IUSD, but they have a few problems. We have IUSD that sometimes doesn't keep its peg. Um, I think the last time I looked, I think it was 90 cents for one IUSD. That's not really a stable asset. Hopefully that gets fixed in V2 of Indigo. We'll see how that one goes, but I do believe it will be a lot better. The other thing with JED is that it's not very capital efficient. You have to use so much ADA to be able to mint it. You need the reserve coin and also JED, all backed by ADA. So uh, there's inefficiencies there. The last thing is that the ADA for both these assets is continuously recycled within the ecosystem. So it's from ADA users back to IUSD and it's no new liquidity coming into the ecosystem. And we wanna attract that new liquidity. We wanna attract institutional investors to the chain. And USDM does that with the banking system that they have. So connecting the banks in, institutional investors can then connect those banks, transfer their uh, USD asset, their fiat, and then be able to mint the USDM stablecoin. So in terms of TVL, should go up. That's how it's gonna help. Full KYC required to mint and burn, not interested, need algorithmic decentralized stables, not government spoke. Yeah, okay. Um, 
yes, 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 uh, a lot of people do want the non-KYC option and don't want their money tracked and followed. That's totally fine. Um, we have other options. We have uh, the uh, Ergo, Ergo stablecoin one, so you can um, use the Rosen Bridge and move your assets back and forth and have a option there. But you also have Jed. So um, if you want a, an algorithmic decentralized stablecoin, use Jed. The massive fee to sell USDM is over bearish to the ADA ecosystem. Uh, yeah, not, uh, not an option for 99% of users. Cool. Yeah, that's fair enough. At the moment, the burning fee is 50, minimum of 50 USD to uh, exit the um, ecosystem. Uh, so that is a lot. So if you're using, if you only have 50 USD and you want to exit out to your bank account, you're going to pay that 50 USD fee and lose all of your transfer. So it's not worth it for a lot of people. Now, this is subject to change. They did say that within their X space uh, and in their documentation. From what I understand, it's all to do with the different banks that they are connected with at the moment. So it costs quite a bit to do a wire transfer. But in the future, they'll have different payment options. They'll have different uh, transfer options and it should hopefully reduce that price, making it cheaper for you as a user to exit out directly with USDM. The other option is that you can sell your USDM for another stable asset. Uh, and then exit that way. Or you can sell it for ADA, transfer the ADA to an exchange and then sell it that way. So you have lots of different options. The other thing also is that hopefully this would attract uh, the attention of other big USD stablecoin players such as uh, USDT, USDC. They'll see how big and how, uh, how much has grown in the USDM ecosystem that they will hopefully not want to miss out bring their tech and liquidity over as well. Uh, FOMO, yeah, it happens with the big players as well. And then they can start, uh, then you as a user can start trading between USDM to USDC and exit that way. They went out because they get the fees. You went out because you have more opportunities and more options to sell and, tr and move your assets off chain. So uh, lots of options there. Uh, this is just the beginning. We're gonna see a lot of changes in the future. Now this one here was an interesting question around the boosted staking that I talked about for fluid tokens. I stake through my ledger to my stake pool. If I do this staking you're talking about, does the ADA stay in my ledger or do I have to send out my ADA from my ledger? Okay, I get, I get what you're saying there. Uh, so yes, you do. Boosted staking on fluid tokens relies on smart contracts. So you'd have to send the ADA to that particular smart contract. That smart contract then manages where that ADA is delegated and for who. So yes, the ADA will leave your ledger, uh, will leave your wallet, interact with that smart contract and your wallet and your ledger will be the only one to be able to pull that ADA back. So uh, in terms of risk, there is that risk because you do have to use the smart contract to interact with it. Uh, so it, it's a balance between the risk and reward so that uh, if you want that extra boosted stake, the extra gain of the fees, you have to take the risk of interacting with a smart contract. At the moment, there have been no zero uh, smart contract exploits within the Cardano ecosystem itself. So in terms of that, of the last two years, I'm very confident about the whole idea and premise of Cardano smart contracts is that we don't get uh, um, hacked or exploited like we do see in other ecosystems. But of course, it's all up to your level of risk and how much risk you wanna take. If you're still very comfortable and prefer to stake directly within your uh, ledger, within your wallet, then that's probably where you should probably stay. Uh, if you are wanting to take a little bit of risk, then you can t interact with these smart contracts and look for opportunities that way. And a lot of people are. And on the flip side, a lot of people aren't. They're so happy with just Cardano native staking. It's liquid, it's very secure, and that's the way they prefer it. So you do have options there, but in this case, you do have to move your ADA from your ledger to a smart contract. I would not trust limit orders on Uniswap unless you can cap the fee as a part of the limit. Uh, so this was my video about uh, Uniswap um, having limit orders now and being able to put an order in the future when the price hits at a certain point. So uh, a lot of the Cardano DEXs, we have this and you know it's, it's all over the place and has been for quite a while. And you can easily do so because you know the fees. It's predictable, it's very cheap and is doesn't, doesn't vary that much. On Uniswap on Ethereum though, <laughs> 
you have the problem where during a really busy period, those gas fees will be astronomical and you could do a swap here on Uniswap and pay an astronomical fee. So um, I didn't think of that. And yeah, I wouldn't trust that either. <laughs> um, maybe there's a mechanism where you prepay your fee or something. I really don't think so though. I don't think it works that way in the Ethereum space. Uh, but yes, good point. Thank you for pointing that out. I thought this was a pretty cool random question and it's about operating a stake pool. Hey there, I've been dabbling in learning how to be a stake pool operator. Can you help guide on the most up-to-date videos or guides other than uh, other than Cardano's. So the most comprehensive guide is from CoinCashew. So if you follow that one, it will take you through everything. So if you haven't set up a server before, if you haven't uh, seen what the Cardano node operations are, CoinCashew is a fantastic guide to go through. I'll put links down below for you, but you can go through every single step. You can learn how to set up an environment, a full uh, state pool on the pre-prod network. So that way you're testing, you're playing around with it. You can then also ask for delegation so you can see if your setup's all correct. And then you can mirror that or swap it over to the mainnet environments. And then you can start a, a state pool that way. Setting it up and following the guides, that's the easy part. Gaining the delegation is super, super hard. And recently I've seen a few more OG state pool operators from the uh, dawn of Shelley, uh, the era when state pools um, uh, started. Uh, recently close up. So Swagpool uh, was one, Jeff from Swagpool uh, recently announced that he's closing up his pool. Um, I'm sorry to see you go there, uh, Jeff, but uh, it's, it's, it's a thing. And if you don't have that marketing and uh, reach and a voice out there in the community, you don't have that type of delegation coming to you. So it's really hard in regards to that. Uh, if you have 3 million ADA lying around and you can delegate it directly to your own staple, go ahead, please do, because you do get the extra ADA from the minimum pool reward. So uh, it's, it's worth doing. So if you do have the ADA, go ahead, start, um, start your own state pool and you can earn that extra ADA in terms of rewards. But if you can't get that delegation, if you don't have that type of reach, if you can't uh, basic, uh, my, my state pool, for example, we, I have roughly around 5,000 people that I've uh, convinced and are very passionate about what I do and have delegated to my state pool. So uh, thank you to all of my delegates. Absolutely fantastic. Love you guys. For anyone else that's starting a brand new state pool, this is the hardest point, gaining that delegation, gaining the trust, gaining, uh, what, gaining the amount of ADA that you need to start minting blocks. Do you know when Kandana will be faster? Hmm, I don't know, I don't know. Um, how fast do you want it to be <laughs> exactly? For me, um, myself, uh, the amount of trading that I do, the amount of uh, interactions I do with NFTs, etc., it's fast enough for me. Uh, the finality of it is still 10 minutes. So when you're moving from an exchange uh, to a Cardano native wallet and back and forth, it does take a bit of time for that confirmation and that finality of your transaction. So that is just the way it is. I don't think that will ever really change unless block times get increased or decreased, I should say. Now, in terms of scaling, there's lots of different options. Um, teams are working on this. We have import endorsers, we have Hydra heads, which are being implemented by various projects. So a project has to implement it itself, uh, such as like Sunday Swap, um, doing it for their decks or transfers between uh, different parties, whatever it might be. So there are a lot of options for scaling. Uh, of course, block, um, block size increases and all that. I did a video with Pi uh, a couple of months ago about this. So I'll put links down below if you want to learn about Cardano scaling and where things are up up to at the moment, check out that video, that will really help. Eternal is a Swiss army knife, I totally agree, absolutely love it. This question here is about uh, the milk conversion. So I did a video about converting milk over to milk v2. So if you're in the Muesli swap ecosystem and you have some of their tokens, it's time to convert them. So this user here has them over on Milkometer on the Muesli swap decks on the Milkometer ecosystem. So you would need to bridge your milk tokens via the Milkometer bridge and then convert them on the decks there. I'll put a couple of links down below so you can follow at the bridging process. It's, it's really quite easy. You connect your MetaMask wallet, connect to Cardano wallet, choose the assets that you want to bridge, bridge them over and you're done. You pay a small fee. It's fairly cheap because it's using Milkometer bridge and you're done. So it's, it's really easy. Does your state pool have any airdrops? Right now, no. We don't have any uh, airdrops right now. Nothing really new at the moment. Uh, no one's really dropping uh, tokens. Uh, but I will let you know if there are more. Uh, keep an eye out. 
I thought this was a good question about using Daedalus and a wallet. Hi, it may be a stupid question. I'm using my Ledger Nano S in combination with Daedalus wallet, so I don't have any assets visible on Ledger Live. How would I have to proceed to get rid of Daedalus because it's pissed me off? Uh, that blockchain is dumping my entire storage space. Yeah, that is a big issue with Daedalus. Now, the fact that you're using a Ledger, you can connect that Ledger to any other Cardano wallets. You can, can, it's integrated into all the wallets. Every wallet out there has Ledger support. Uh, just load up Eternal, for example, or Typhon, NAMI wallet even. Uh, probably not NAMI because uh, you, you may be using a multi-account wallet or um, a, a multi-address wallet, sorry. So um, load up Eternal, uh, load up Typhon if you want a simpler interface, uh, connect in your Ledger and then sync in your hardware wallet that way. Everything that was in your Daedalus will appear in one of those brand new wallets that you've just set up and you don't need to sync the entire blockchain. Instead, you're using the wallet's infrastructure, their node infrastructure to sync that data. So it will pass down a little bit of information to your wallet, what you need, such as your accounts and your balances. And that's it. So if you want to do a transaction, it's a lot faster. It's a lot easier. You don't have to sync the entire thing. I, I have the capacity. I have a huge com uh, computer here, a huge PC here where I can do and sync the Daedalus node. That way I can have my own connection to the blockchain at any point in time. Also I have my stake pools. I can actually connect my uh, NAMI wallet, my any other light wallet I've got, um, Eternal, um, whatever, to my Cardano nodes, my actual stake pool itself, and then transfer my transactions directly through that. So I have a lot of options here because I, I know how to set it all up. But for this user here, just load up Eternal or Typhon, connect your wallet, your Ledger Nano, restore your accounts there and, and keep going. It's so much easier than using Daedalus a lot of the time, especially if you don't have the space. When is MinSwap V2 happening? Um, I haven't heard any more news or updates about MinV2, not since the Kadana Summit back in November last year. Uh, so that's all I know at the moment. I can't give you guys any more sneak peeks or anything. I don't have anything, uh, but as soon as I do, as soon as I know, I will highlight it and do all the course material and everything else around it as well. But that's it guys. That's all I got for this Q&A session. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, you know the drill. Hit that like button, hit subscribe, click on that notification bell as well. Lots more Kadana updates. I have a lot of news this week, especially. Uh, a lot has happened over the weekend, so do check out that news update. Also check out the video of myself and Josh racing in Cornucopias where I absolutely smash his records. All right, see you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast.